Yeah, it's that time once again where the fedora wearing John Hudson comes on in to Space Down Radio, breaks down the latest and greatest in the UFO news that is going on around the world. And John, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And thank you, everyone, for sticking around. It's nice to see everybody. All right. Let's get right to it. Video from 1995 from the Air Force that military.com brought out. I saw this earlier today, man. And I was like, really? Are we getting well, to me? Here? I know. I know. So, so first there's so many, there's so many interesting aspects to the story, right? So, so first off, like Dave said, this, this is basically, it was a, it was, it was that there was an old show called hard copy and basically hard copy did an, did an episode in 1995 about a uh, air force video of a bloody UFO. I mean, that's what it looks like. Right. And it's actually, it's not a bad video. And, uh, and what's so amazing about this story is one, this happened in 1995 and most everyone I talked to had no idea. I had no memory of it whatsoever, had no idea what it was. And the, so the, one, so that's weird Two, military.com. I mean, not, not that it's not like the military.com website is run by the DOD or anything. Right. Like, I mean, don't put that much, you know, like prestige on it but still it's a it's a somewhat con somewhat conservative periodical and uh, and they pull this out of the woodworks right and but to me the real story beyond this and i encourage you guys to go watch the video because it's kind of cool is it it just it once again supports my my current frustrating hypothesis which is that it's not about events it's not about some big event happening that makes everyone aware we've had a ton of events that should have made everyone aware and they didn't work <laughs> And there's there's a ton of them. If you go back in UFO history, there's a ton of these things. And this is just another perfect example. Like I watched the video. To me, this this was as impressive of a video as as like the Tic Tac. You know, I mean, and like no one like no one cared. It blows my mind. I just I don't get it. I, I mean, you agree, Dave? It was an interesting video, right? I thought it was. And you know what? I swear I saw this video on hard copy in 1985. Okay, well, good. I'm, I'm really thank swear you, right here. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. You're the first. <laughs> I'm old. I'm old. <laughs> what you Yeah, it's just like. But anyway, it, go to go check it. I'll I'll put it in my notes. Go check it out. It's a cool video, and there's not like there's anything to follow up on it. It's just to me, it's just like military.com did it, and it's hard copy, and it was in 1995. Like, where did this come from? So it was just it just kind of blew my mind. Yeah, it it kind of blew my mind too. Why is this? video coming back to fruition now i have no clue i have absolutely no clue whatsoever the, the only thing i can guess is that like the the writers over at military.com were just like you know pouring through google and just well probably not google for this maybe DuckDuckGo, but they were pouring through search engines and found it that's the only thing i can think of because it, it doesn't relate to anything it was just it was just this random story and but like why that wasn't on CNN when it came out, I have no idea. Like it was on hard copy and then no one followed up on it. Right. Bizarre. Unbelievable. Bizarre. Unbelievable. It really is unbelievable. All right. Let's move on to Anjali here because yes. yeah, the, oh, the, so sad. the retreat to go find aliens in the Mojave desert that we all knew wasn't going to happen is now officially, unofficially not happening. Well, um, uh, you know, I, I have, I have her, I have her quote here. She said, um, with great respect, um, the expedition to the mountain is postponed. Uh, Wayne uh, has now said that no one may enter his property, including myself. Uh, my intentions are to press forward. I will gather the team and they will be briefed and together we will determine a plan of action. Uh, I need backup. Uh, and um, so uh, essentially she, she is still trying to give people hope that it's going to happen. Um, I, and, and I will say this, I, I actually do believe that she wants to do this. I don't know why, because I don't think it's going to end well. But I do, I do believe she wants to do this for some reason. Um, however, from what I'm hearing, Wayne, the gentleman's name, um, uh, Wayne has actually talked to some people. And Wayne is evidently going to be interviewed, uh, I believe, in the beginning of December. 
and um, I'm still getting details on this. And um, my understanding is that Wayne isn't as doesn't feel the same way that Angeli does, and wishes to speak his mind. And um, I don't think it's going to expand on that. What do you mean by that? Well, from what I from what I've heard, and I haven't talked to him, he has no idea who she is. There's no tunnel. He never dug a hole, and there's no portal. And he's rather irritated that people have been calling him. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> it's super weird. <laughs> Especially because if you listen to her original story, it was Wayne that she met in the coffee shop that overheard her conversation, that struck up a conversation with her and took her back to his property. It, Wayne was the whole instigator of this whole thing. So now that there's, there's this great Wayne's World meme that's blown up all over Twitter, you know, because it's, it's, it's Wayne's World. <laughs> and she's, she's telling stories that one of the reasons why he shut it down is allegedly this Wayne gentleman has cancer. Well, I had heard that when she first told her story in the very beginning, she alluded to that. She alluded that he had been fighting cancer at some point in the past. I didn't know that he was I didn't know that he was still fighting it. I didn't know what stage it was in or anything like that. But she had alluded to before that Wayne was ill. Um, and um, and but, you know, the funny thing is a couple people on Twitter have taken the opposite stance and they're like, Wayne, Wayne's trying to stop this closure. Somebody, somebody you're trying to place Wayne as, as the as the evil villain in this scenario. And even Angeli was coming up to Wayne's defense, going, "No, no, 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 Wayne's a nice guy." How how does he not know who Angeli is? Who's telling? Well, he you? knows now. I'll tell you that. Well, I realize that he knows now. But are you buying his story that he's never seen her before in his life? Because look. I mean, it's the same thing. Like if, if somebody puts you in an uncomfortable predicament, you're going to try and, and hit that deny button very well. It's easy. Look, it's easy with everything on Jolly has said to blame her. Okay. Or to him sure. throw, throw her under the bus, say, I don't know who this lady is. Yep. Right. Oh, no. Oh, absolutely. No, no, no. I mean, it. It's, that's the problem. There's so many possibilities, right? It's possible that he really doesn't know anything. It's possible that that most of what we heard happened as it said. But when realistically, there was only a small tunnel. And when each of them got to the end of it, they just went into a trance and thought they went somewhere and didn't actually go somewhere. It's, I mean, there's so many possible, there's so many possible explanations to what happened. And, you know, and it's very possible that, that Wayne, when he introduced her to this and all this was thinking that, you know, this is not going to end up on, you know, CNN. And, you know, I'm just sharing this with a, with a fellow experiencer sort of a thing. And now that he's seen all the press that she's generated and the, and the things she did on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial, he's like, Ah, I'm out of here. And maybe he is just denying it all. I, I agree with you. I think it's possible. Hold on one second, because Matthew Quiet Riot in our chat room says he you talked, talked to, Wayne to Wayne three weeks ago, said Nicely Wayne was done. not immune, <laughs> amused. All right. And then he said Wayne said he would do an interview. Okay. Who, who's my... my I, I believe it is um I believe it is um Steve uh, uh Cham Chamberlain Cambian Cambian I believe it is I believe it's Cambian I believe he's the one who got the interview I I, I believe it's the first week of December um and uh, and, and I will say that the Angeli went the other day went on a show with with him and uh Jeremy alien scientist and like three other or two other people that are all pretty anti per hypothesis and she actually went on and debated it with them it was only like a 14 minute show i haven't watched it yet but i got to say i i give her props for for you know for for trying well let's see what else matthew has to say it says wayne said he didn't know anjali and wayne was super nice no, Wayne is a, an honestly nice dude. She Good. knew he had cancer. He didn't call it off because of it. Uh, Matthew said, I told folks three weeks ago this was going to happen. And then she had to make a move, according to Matthew. Uh, he doesn't know anything. He said, who? Can you say her name again? He was so confused. 
Oh yeah. Oh, oh man. man, this is at this some is level this is beautiful. I mean, <clears throat> this is the this is the woo battery that just keeps on wooing. Yes. Yeah. It's a, it's astounding. It really is. It's astounding. Right? It, it is it is astounding. It is astounding. Yeah. Unbelievable. I don't know. We'll find out more, you know, same bat time, same bat channel. So All right, finally, explain to us who John Ramirez is. Okay. Now now we have some real stuff, okay? So I'll try to I'll try to, you know, get more serious here. So, um John Ramirez is um is a is a really lovely individual. Um I um you know, just for full disclosure, I'm in a uh well, you know, one of the 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 small, you know, side chat things that I'm on on a Discord is a small group, you know, very small group and he's one of them. And so I've been talking to him for a couple months and he's a, he's a really good guy. And uh, he basically retired from the CIA in 2009. He was a GS-15, which is essentially the highest rank you can achieve as a civilian without going into an executive role. So he is, believe I believe, the same rank that, that Elizondo was at. Um, at one point, he and Elizondo did work in the same building, um, but they never actually saw each other. So they, at that point, they didn't know each other existed. And uh, and basically, what uh, what John has decided to do is John decided to create a presentation. It's, um, I believe, if I remember correctly, it's 74 slides. There's be a link to it in the, in the in the notes. And this presentation is astounding. This presentation is absolutely astounding. And the reason why it's astounding is the very end of it is just fun. It's like his crazy hypotheses about what might be this and what might be that, and that's entertaining. But the bulk of it is teaching all of us how the government actually works who actually controls what data and where we all should actually be filing our, our FIOAs to. That's really what it is. It's a lesson about how to file better FOIAs, right? That's really what the presentation is. However, in the presentation, several other things were said that I wanted to call it late to. So one of them is a gift to you, Dave. And, uh, and that is that um, uh, he was asked, you know, um, uh, you know, about, you know, why he, he thought, in his opinion, that Lou Elizondo had not used the word hybrids or talked about hybrids. And, and, you know, did he think that this was a word that, you know, Lou wasn't supposed to use for some reason? And, uh, and, and John Marius gave an interesting response. He, he basically kind of, you know, was kind of like, you know, kind of, to me, kind of gave like a, well, of course, kind of response. And, but basically said, um, you know, and I'm paraphrasing here. Um, uh, and, and I want to know, I, I have a message into John, you know, to, get to make it clarity about this to make sure that i'm understanding right he wasn't able to get back to me before the show but going on what he said in the interview interview what he said was it's not time yet it's not it's that hasn't happened yet in the schedule the other things happen other things have, have to happen first is essentially what he said like what uh he didn't say he didn't say that but basically what he just what he just what he what he was implying was that there was a dun, da, 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 a uh, narrative, right? I mean, that's really okay. what it was implying was, was that there, you know, there's a schedule and that, you know, and that certain things have to happen before other things happen and that there's a, there's an order of operations and that using the word hybrid in public is something that's not supposed to happen till later. And that was like, huh? Like that, that surprised me. I, that caught me off guard. I must admit. Um, and so that was fun. And, um, and then uh, the other thing, so there, uh, basically there's a lot of great things in this presentation. I recommend everyone look at it, but what I pulled out of it mainly was a gift for Dave and a gift for me. Uh, so the gift for me part is, is that uh, the other day when I was telling all you guys about um, the relationship between a swap, uh, a swap <laughs> awesome. and, and a tip. Uh, and I was talking about the, the, the ridiculous kind of uh, infighting that's been going on about the funding and how, ATIP didn't need funding because they didn't have to build any buildings. They didn't have to, you know, hire anyone. They didn't have to buy any stuff. It was just OPEX, OPEX basically, which means everyone's already got a salary. They're all paid. And so they didn't need to have extra funding. Well, essentially in this, you know, in the presentation, John Ramirez said almost exactly what I said. I mean, he even said, if you don't have to build any buildings, he actually used that same phrase. I was blown away. Um, and, and so basically we have a, a GS-15 former CIA confirming exactly what i told you all and so that was my gift and so but i highly recommend you guys check it out it's one hell of a presentation and i'll provide a link to it in the notes all right and that'll be on 
from John's Twitter account to our Twitter account at Spaced Out Radio. He always tags us in it. John, another great episode of the Unbiased UFO Report. 